you know, when I took this assignment, I figured there'd be more gambling. I'm actually holding back tears because I didn't, oh, I didn't let the cinnamon get all out of there. Oh, it's in my eyes. Hey guys, it's Ashton from Ashton Warrior Props, and today we're gonna be painting our NCR Ranger veteran armor in the style of the Desert Rangers. Now, the style of the Desert Rangers is a DLC variant uh, in New Vegas from Honest Hearts. I think it's really freaking cool. You can see right off the bat, I've gone ahead and made a custom paint scheme on mine and done some like custom additions. That's because again, we are hopefully in the beginning stages of doing a mini series. Um, so I'm painting all of these based on a character profile. Before we get into the video, make sure to go check out the link in the description to our website where you can find the templates and videos to make, or you could just go back on our YouTube channel and find the videos that instructed you how to make these. Then once you've made them, come back here and let's paint our Desert Ranger. To get into the video for starters, we're gonna take on the helmet. Um, I always like to start from head to toe. I live by the ideology that if you can do the most advanced or iconic part first, you can do the rest of it really easily. Um, before we get into it again, um, you'll notice again, I've got custom work on this. I will tell you when to stop doing the custom work if you want to keep it game accurate, because I know a lot of people that are like me who are like, it has to be game accurate, but this is for a specific character profile, so it's gonna be a little different. Now for starters, what we're going to start out with is by sealing and priming our foam prop, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a big fan of Plasti Dip. What we're gonna do for starters is add um, three nice, decent coats of Plasti Dip. You can do you can do about a medium to distance range. We want to have a texture. This is not an ultra smooth piece of metal we're talking about. This is, at, at the rate what we're going at, this is supposed to be 200 year old. It's been cleaned up here and there kind of armor. So yes, it's gonna be dirty. So that Plasti Dip texture, or even if you have pitting from overspray, yes, that is good, keep it. So once you have about three or four good coats of Plasti Dip on there, you see me doing the Plasti Dip? Ryan, you see it? Yeah, because I made the clips. Once your Plasti Dip is good and dry, you're gonna go and grab some of this Rust-Oleum lacquer. It's a black lacquer. Uh, you'll see why here in a minute, um, especially if you're going to do paint chipping on this, because remember, the Desert Ranger is not like the regular Ranger where it's just that raw, bare steel uh, that's got, you know, like the painting, the lettering on it. But this has got, it's that raw steel that's been painted over. So what we're gonna do is go over all of our damage points. So wherever you've put damage on your costume is where you're going to hit it with that Rust-Oleum black lacquer. And you're gonna just make sure, you, you can go a little liberal with it. I mean, just get a decent coat on there till it's smooth. And once that is dry, you're then gonna go over it with some of this all clad lacquers. Chrome, zoom enhance. What you're gonna do with the All Cloud Lacquers Chrome is throw it up in your airbrush and then you're gonna go over every place where you just hit your damage with the uh, All Cloud, or the, mm, mm. oh, it's gonna be another video. Oh, it's gonna be one of those where I'm forgetting all the words because words are hard. Take the Chrome uh, with two light passes over everywhere you did the black Rust-Oleum Lacquer and then you're gonna wanna leave that. Leave that for about 30 minutes just to be safe because the next thing we're gonna do um, is we're going to cover that stuff and cover it with what you may ask, but well, you sit your ass down because I'm gonna tell you what we covered it in. We took some of this Mold Makers latex. Uh, you can find it at local hobby stores or you can order it. Um, it's not the cheapest stuff in the world, but what are you doing? What are you doing? Just keep going. I, but keep I wanna know what you're doing. Fixing the lamp. Oh, you're fixing the lamp. That's a good idea. You're gonna take the Mold Builders, uh, the latex, and you're gonna take a a little ratty brush. Uh, I got these at Michael's um, for like a dollar. So, and fan it out a little bit, spend some time fanning it out. I've seen a lot of people who do this and then they hairspray it. You can also do that. Um, but once you do that, you're gonna take your little wrap brush and lightly dab it in the latex. And then once you've got the brush, uh, you know, lathered up a little bit, you're gonna go over, again, go over all of your damage and just stipple it on there. You're not wanting to like coat it like your brush coating, you're just gonna stipple it in there, you know, you know, like that. Make sure it's thick, make sure you can see it for like after about two minutes because if you've gone too thin, you're not gonna be able to peel it back off later. Um, so again, stipple it on there, make sure it's nice and thick and make sure it's an odd pattern because paint chips are not, you know, this, 
All right, up next we're going to get into our base coat metallic. So after all of that uh, latex has dried on the armor, you can set the armor aside for right now. We don't need it right now. So just put that off to the side and we're gonna focus on the helmet. And so for the helmet, what I then did was I took some of this Rust-Oleum flat soft iron or soft flat iron and gave it two or three uh, light medium passes on the faceplate and the flashlight camera unit. After those are dried, we're then going to tape off the faceplate with uh, just some blue painter's tape. And then we're gonna get into the camouflage and um, painted parts of the helmet. So next we're going to go into the desert camoing of the bucket. So after your faceplate has dried, mask it off. Uh, make sure you're uh, mostly intricate right here when it comes to uh, yeah, masking the flashlight comm system off. Um, and then what you're gonna do is take your beige, not brown, I'm holding brown, but you want beige to start out with. So you're gonna hit it with the beige, do a light to medium pass. While your paint is still uh, tacky on there, what you're gonna do is I talked about it earlier, is take some foam dust. So when you're sanding earlier, and I actually, I didn't realize I was wearing the shirt when I wanna talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about it for a minute. Um, so when you're dremeling and sanding, it's gonna get all over your shirt. That's why you should go grab you a shirt. So shameless plug, foam dust collection unit, grab it. So I collect my foam dust in a little jar. So what I do is after I dremel, I take the vacuum and you know get all the dust off of me. You can even like hold the vacuum tube and dremel right over it, suck it all up in the vacuum. Anywho, back to it. So you're gonna take your foam dust while your paint is still tacky and you're gonna throw the dust on there. And I know you're probably like, Ashen, you're a moron. Why are you doing that? Or I don't know why you're doing that. Your, your reactions can range from nice to dick. And it, we do this because if you've ever looked at military style vehicles or military paint jobs, especially, you know, more recently, every, uh, our troops or US troops were wearing a uh, desert camo. If you go up and feel like uh, some of the trucks or whatever, they've got a sandy texture to it. anything that's like metallic got that sandy texture or that is you know beige or desert color has a sandy texture to it and the best way to achieve that is while your paint's tacky throw some dust on it you can make it as uh, textured or as non textured as you want I think uh, uh, there's there's a fine line like there's not texture and then there's too much texture right there is where you want to be you're gonna throw your dust on there and then you're gonna let it set for a minute once the paint is mostly dry you're gonna hit it with another light coat of the beige um, Followed by that, you're gonna take your brown, and if you have a black, you can use a black as well, but then you're going to do some wide sweeping passes over the bucket. With everything still masked, you're just gonna do wide sweeping passes over the bucket, and this is going to add a couple dark spots. Mind you, the helmet in game is just this desert color. It doesn't have a camo pattern. However, I think adding a camo pattern would be cool. Remember, this is not the Desert Ranger, you know, armor cosplay. This is supposed to be a personalized character. I've already written a backstory and what, because this is one of the characters for our mini series. So again, this is your character. This is not somebody you have to mimic 100% to the point. This is your own character and, you know, add camo if you want to. Anywho, back to the video. After you've done your wide sweeping passes, if it's too dark, hit it with the beige again. Um, you can also hit it with uh, the brown once more after that to kind of darken it up and give it that uh, darker flavor. Flavor. After you've got the bucket and the mask started out with uh, base coated, my God, this is gonna be a long day. Once you've got those uh, painted with their base colors, set it off to the side. We're gonna come back to it later. Now we're gonna move on to the armor and the armor is very similar to the bucket of the helmet. We're going to make sure all that latex that we had just put on the bucket and the armor is dry. If it is dry, uh, then we're gonna hit it with a beige pass. And then we're gonna follow the same steps we did. We're gonna do beige, brown, and you know, you can see on the chest here that it has more of a camo pattern. Um, again, I didn't go ultra heavy on it because I didn't want to for this character. You're not my dad. Once you've got your beige on there, you're gonna dust it, then you're gonna brown, and then dust it. And then, I think I hit the mic. And then you're gonna beige, and then brown, and black, and brown, and black, and then hot color. The pattern exactly, you're gonna wanna do beige, dust, brown, dust, beige, dust, and then you'll do your brown and black, and then your beige one more time, and then if you want it a little bit darker, hit it with the brown from a very distance, uh, from a distance. 
And that's the same for all of the armor. At this stage, where you're at once your paint is dry, you can go ahead and you can peel off the latex, and I think I've got a couple clips of me doing that as well. I do? Yes. Mm. So you're gonna scratch off that latex on the bucket and the armor. Now, you'll stop and look at mine real quick and go, hey, yours isn't scratched off anymore. That's because, let me teach you a little trick. We're going on a little side tension here. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched season two of The Mandalorian, like stop watching or skip about, you know, time. When this man said tangent, he wasn't kidding. Yes, this man right there. Went on for several minutes about why his armor looks the way it does. All it comes down to is that his armor is made to look as though it has been repainted over some cruddy old armor. Very similar to Boba Fett in season two of The Mandalorian. That's it. That's all. You can do it if you want. If you want to stay game accurate, just scratch that latex right off and Bob Smith super glues your uncle, you've got paint chip damage on your armor. Yeah, so after you've scratched off your latex, you're done with the uh, spray paint um, and stuff. Make sure when you are spray painting to do it in a well-ventilated area like a garage or go outside. Like I went to my day job's garage and painted by a door and wear a respirator. I'm really, I, shame on me for that. Like wear gloves and a respirator. I'm messy. Once you've got all of your base colors ready to go, you've scratched off your latex, we're now ready into detailing. And getting into the detailing, we're going to focus solely right now on the helmet as it has the most detail. For starters, getting into the helmet, uh, you're gonna go over to your face plate and your um, camera comm system. And you're gonna wanna pick up some of this Tamiya panel line accent color black, brown, and that is a weird way to hold my hand, black, brown, and dark brown. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix that um, in a, about an even ratio into a little mixing bowl, and we're going to take a rag, and with that rag, we are going to- Oh, no, Mike, you hit my toe, did you? How's my toe sound? How's my toe sound? You're gonna get yourself a, have, a, little, a healthy mixture of the black, dark, brown, and brown, and we're gonna dab a little rag in there, and we're going to dab and wipe dab and wipe, dab and wipe. We're going for machined armor. So what we're, again, dab, dab and drag, dab and drag, dab and drag. And once you've done that and it's got that, you'll see it has almost a blued tint to it. I can really tell you why it does that, but it does it. Um, so once you've got that little blued tint, you're then going to grab, while it's still tacky too, you're not gonna do this. Don't laugh at me, I hear you laughing over there. You're gonna whip out your airbrush, if you have an airbrush. Um, if you don't, get an airbrush. Um, you're then going to take all clad two lacquer chrome and all clad two lacquer steel again with the hand And you're gonna mix that into about a 50 50 ratio into your airbrush pistol uh, Reservoir and you're going to go over all of your faceplate metals now You can mask off the bucket if you want. It's not really gonna show up there because it's not got a um, You know a good underlying base coat to show up on the bucket. I didn't mask it off as you can see um, but yeah, so 50-50 ratio of the all-clad chrome and all-clad steel into your airbrush pistol, and you're going to go uh, probably a good healthy pass over everything. Um, if you push and hold, if you've got a dual action uh, airbrush, you're going to push and hold about medium way. And you're going to go over everything that is the supposed to be the faceplate and comm system. And once that's done, there's more. We're then going to top coat it. Are we going to top coat it? So write this down. Take a little note. That's a song. You're then going to take your Tamiya accent line color panel liner accent color thing mixture again, and you're going to put it on your rag. And this time we're going to dab a little bit. Dab all over. You can do the wipe motion again if you want. Um, but after you've done that all over the faceplate, the comm, the the the, the camera, mm. Then we're gonna grab one of our little wrap brushes again. And one thing you will notice, if you've ever looked at something that was like this, this would have been machined in a factory. And what I mean by that, it would have been a piece of metal that was laying on a mill, and they would have had the end mill come in and go and it would have left uh, almost like a brushed like a brushed effect on it. If you've ever held something that's been machined, it's got like a brushed thing on it. So we're gonna add that brush texture. So we're gonna grab our wrap brush, and then we're also gonna get, again, it's covered in paint, but it's the Tamiya acrylic paint, and it's got chrome silver X-11. But you're gonna take that in there, and you're gonna dab your wrap brush in there, and then you're gonna wipe a lot of it off. And the reason we're gonna do that is we're not going for like sweeping broad brush strokes. We're just going to add it 
to make it look like it's been machined. So we're gonna go, especially on the edges, you're not gonna go like deep into it. You're just gonna go on the edges and just lightly sweep upward on it. And you're gonna go over all the edges. You're not gonna just go over the ones on the faceplate. You can go lighter than heavier, not the bucket edge. Just, yeah, you're just doing your faceplate right now. Um, so once you've got your brushed metal effect in there, set and let that dry. And what I like to do just for the extra effect is take a Scotch-Brite pad and you're going to follow that same pattern with your brush strokes with your Scotch-Brite pad. What this is, oh no, son of a, I did have paint on it, son of a. Uh, that'll add a physical texture to it. And what I mean by that is it won't, you won't pick it up on camera. You may subtly pick it up on camera, um, but especially in person, it's going to throw somebody off unless they're holding it and feel the weight. It's going to make it look incredibly real. And that's what we're going for here is movie quality and real. So once you're done with your brush strokes to give it that machined look, then we're going to set and let it dry for a minute and make sure everything is dried and you know, not wet. Lord, this is going to be a fun one to edit. I'm going to look like a total freaking idiot. <laughs> he's gonna leave this in there. I know he's gonna do it. So next, we're gonna whip out our Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic Mars Black Red Medium Cadmium Free and then Burnt Umber. And what we're gonna do with the black, burnt umber, and red is we're gonna mix that together. And now we're going to go for our grime pass. And what I mean by a grime pass is once it's all mixed together, we're gonna go everywhere that uh, dirt, grime, rust, and dust, and water would collect. So definitely in the crevices, get a little bit in the damage, don't go overboard. Um, and if you really want to sell the effect of grime that's been wiped out, when you're doing it in the damage, so dab it in there and wipe it away with your finger immediately. And that'll leave a little streak like it's been wiped out before. It's just one of those little teeny tiny tricks that really helps sell your prop. So after that, after you've done your grime pass, <sighs> after you've done your grime pass on all the dirt, damage, and grime, then we're gonna go into our blacks. And what I mean by our blacks is I mean our vents and our hose and our antenna. And I use just the basic Mars black and you can brush it on there pretty thick. Um, it's good if it has a texture. Again, this is military stuff we're talking about. Um, so just make sure you're really careful and light, especially when you're doing the vents. Uh, with the vents, if you've done an additional like layer of mesh, dab it in there. Once you've got your blacks uh, all covered and painted, then we're going to move into the stenciling. And for the stenciling, uh, I have a Cricut, and so that made a lot of this really easy. In the template folder, you'll find the stencils, I think. I will make sure before this video goes up. Uh, the stencils to put everything on here. And what I did was I just used some stencil transfer uh, vinyl on my Cricut, all of those little details and doodads, and I did them with an airbrush. The brush paint would look good as well, but you can do it with a white airbrush. I used the titanium white, Golden High Flow Acrylics Titanium White Blanca de Tatene. First, I like to lay out the insert slot and arrow stencils, which are gonna go right here at the front of the faceplate. I lay them on, um, you'll notice I'm not masking everything. I've got a really steady hand with an airbrush, so if you dial it down in there, you won't really need to mask off the whole area. Um, so the slot inserts are gonna go at the front of the faceplate on the first and second tier, about in this location right there. And then next we're gonna do these little letters on the side of the canister. And they're just at a little angle. And then on the filter, we've got this little down arrow. Next we have T-Power. It says T-Power right here. Um, I've dirtied it up a little bit, but you should still be able to see it, right? So the T-Power is not on the actual Desert Ranger armor in game. It's on every other variation except the Desert Ranger. I don't know why I threw it in there because I felt like it makes sense, especially with the lore of the Desert Ranger just kind of molded into the NCR. Um, so yeah, it would make sense to me that way. Next we have the TH22-A in a circle. And after you've done the TH22-A in the circle, then you're gonna do the HV57 and whatever in this little cavity right here. Um, and then you've got the L2 and the secure that go back there. Um, but yeah, after that, you are done with your stenciling portions. So you're gonna lay all of these on and you're gonna go over it with that titanium white and you're gonna be very gentle. Um, again, you're just gonna do two or three light passes with your titanium white. You're not going to try to crush this with your white. Now, if you wanna do something custom on the bucket like what I've done, now is your time. At this point, we are in the home stretch of the entire armor. Uh, so what I did was I took that same panel line mix with um, my rag 
and now you go buck wild on the whole operation especially go heavier with the dark brown and just dab it on there dab and then occasionally smear dab and smear because what this is going to do is add some age to it this is acting as our black wash i don't typically do acrylic black washes on something that i want to go hyper real with so you're just going to go all over the entire helmet dab wipe dab wipe dab wipe um and then splat everywhere and after that we're gonna set that off to the side and let it dry for a minute and we're gonna pull up the rest of the armor um so what i did next was i took my oxygen backpack thing tank and i painted the straps black because that's what they are in the game oh and the little button not the duding button or the booping button but the this button then i painted the little white stripe and then that was it this was done after that, I took the arms and the hand pieces and I went ahead and dashed cinnamon on here. And why cinnamon? Because it's modular and you can wipe it off and add more as you go, typically like at a convention or whatever. Um, you know, you'll wipe it off or whatever, but I still, I like to keep it to where I can wipe it off. It adds that little like immersion into what you're doing. Cause you can literally take a rag, wipe it off, add some more, especially when you're filming, like what we're planning on doing, having it modular so you can wipe stuff off is nice. And it just adds, it looks like sand and dust, um, and dirt has just gotten in there, which is what you want. You can darken it up a little bit. You can torch it too. I've done that in the past, but uh, sprinkling cinnamon and then brushing it off with a wrap brush and then a rag uh, helps bury it in the cracks and crevices where rust and dust would collect. Um, so I did that on the arms, hand plates, and backpack. I went back to the helmet and then I did my cinnamon pass on the helmet. So I threw all of my cinnamon on the helmet and wiped it off uh, with the wrap brush and the rag, especially make sure you're pushing it down into your crevices and cracks and creases and damage. Um, and then now we are on the final piece which is the chest plate and all we're doing to the chest plate plate chest plate is taking the uh, mars black and we're going to go in between all of the armor plates once that's done you're going to go and take your panel liner uh, mix that we have the dark brown the black and the brown so you're going to take then your rag and you're going to do that same style that we had done on the rest of the armor and this is also going to accent the camo pattern or especially if you've done a light pattern it'll accent it a little bit but you're going to dab and then wipe in a few places, dab and then wipe in a few places. And then finally, you're gonna hit it with your cinnamon and then you're done with the basic build and paint. Uh, finally, I did green lenses on my Desert Ranger helmet. So, and the way to achieve that is I used some 16th inch acrylic plates and uh, traced out my shape, cut them. You have to score it about three or four times, then it'll just snap off. After that, I had a mirrored green uh, tint laying around, and all I did was just spray some soapy water on the acrylic, lay it on, and bada bing, bada bob, smith your uncle. Typically, I like to light these or backlight them. Um, I didn't go ahead and do it on this uh, particular one. I probably will, in the near future, just add a light up in the top of the helmet, right above the lens, so it's not shooting in your eye. But with that said and done, we have built, painted, textured, and all stuff. And it, oh, and I added the tube. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We just finished up all of the Desert Ranger and I couldn't be happier. It looks, I mean, of course, you know, I did this custom work and whatever, but you know, we've got a movie quality, even real, like just holding it. If it was colder and weighed a little bit more, you'd think it was real like this. It, it turned out, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Uh, if you check out the links below, you can find the templates to build all of this stuff. I've got previous videos that are already up that you can watch on how to build it. Um, I'm assuming you followed. I hope you all enjoyed. Check out the links below if you want to support us. There's a pay bleh, 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 PayPal on our website where you can drop a one-time donation. It helps us out a lot. I'm still trying to get the equipment to actually use a camera rather than just my phone to film this stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Oh, it's in my eyes. Uh, oh, look. Oh, I'm tearing up. Oh, wow. Do you see that? <laughs> uh, oh, God. I hope you're not recording. I really do. Oh, I hate that. Oh, that... Oh.